there's a lot more to traffic lights than meets the eye, and they're one of the top 10 reasons for failing the driving test. This video should help you find out why. To kick off, it's important to know the order of the lights. If you see red and amber together, you know green will be next, and if you see amber on its own, red will be next. However, just to confuse you, at some pedestrian crossings, flashing amber is followed by green. Flashing amber means you can go when people have finished crossing the road. In fact, many people fail the driving test each year for waiting at a flashing amber light when no one's crossing the road. When you have red and amber together, this means get ready to go, but you should not cross the line until it's green. Although in reality, nearly everyone goes before green. Amber on its own means stop if you can. It's perfectly legal to cross the line when the light is amber, but it is illegal when it's red. Amber only lasts three seconds, so you don't have much time to decide to stop or go once you see it. A way around this lack of time is to decide as you approach the traffic lights. When I approach a green light, in my head I say stop, 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 until I feel less than three seconds away, then I say go, 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 go. That way, if the lights change, I know what to do immediately. Many people fail the driving test for braking too harshly at an amber light when they should have continued. Slowing down for a green light unnecessarily is also a test fail. You should drive at a normal speed for the road and hazards ahead. Of course, you would need to slow down if you were turning left or right to make the turn safely. There are four main types of traffic light controlled pedestrian crossing. Pelican, Puffin, Toucan and Equestrian. Puffin and Pelican, they're for people. Toucan is for cyclists and Equestrian is for horses. I've never actually seen an Equestrian crossing before. However, once you've finished your theory test, it really doesn't matter what they're called. You don't need to know the names of them. All that matters is the light is red, you've got to stop at the red light. So after your theory test, the next time you say puffin, you will probably be at a zoo. Most lights have primary lights and secondary lights. The primary lights are near the stop line and the secondary lights are near the end of the junction. The secondary lights are merely there to make it easier to see the lights when you are close to the stop line. Don't make the mistake of stopping at the secondary light if it goes red whilst you're crossing the junction. This is dangerous and would certainly be a test failure. It's a common mistake when turning left or right to stop at the secondary light as it will always be red when yours is green. But that light is not for you, it's for these people. Stop at the stop line when the lights are red. But remember, once you have passed the stop line, you should continue safely even if the lights go red. This also applies to temporary traffic lights. This red sign that says, when red light shows wait here, is the equivalent to the stop line which is normally painted on the road. As you can see, it is way before the traffic light. So if the light goes red and you are past the sign, you should continue. Stopping at the red light after you have passed that sign is a driving test fail. Some traffic lights have two stop lines. These are known as advanced stop lines. You should stop at the first line as the second line is reserved for cyclists. If however you have already crossed the first line as the lights go red, you can stop at the second line. However, this normally only ever happens in very slow moving traffic. Stopping at the second line unnecessarily is a driving test fail. You should not pass a stop line if your exit road is blocked or you may end up stuck in the middle of the road blocking the junction for others. Some junctions have what is called a yellow box painted on the road to encourage you to keep it clear, but you should keep it clear even if there is no yellow box. This is another reason people fail the driving test at traffic lights. You need to be aware that when your light is green, the oncoming cars also have a green light. This is not a problem when turning left or going straight, but if you want to turn right, you will need to wait in the middle of the junction until there is no oncoming cars, as it is their priority. Lots of people forget to do this, learners and experienced drivers alike. Not waiting is dangerous and definitely a test fail. However, if you can see your exit road is blocked, you should wait before the stop line. You can only wait in the middle if your exit road is flowing. Try to wait slightly before the middle as this will allow room for oncoming cars who also want to turn. But if the exit road gets blocked whilst you have been waiting in the middle, this is not your fault. There is not a lot you can do about this. If it's possible and safe, try to move out of the way when the cars from your side get a green light to help traffic flow. 
unless you do something silly, this is not a test fail as it is out of your control. If the light goes red when you are waiting in the middle, that is a good sign that the oncoming cars will stop and you can go. When you're waiting to turn right, make sure you don't stop on the advanced stop lines. Stop before or after them. I like to call them cycle boxes as it's more descriptive. As mentioned earlier, you can fail for stopping here. If you wait on these little squares for pedestrians, that's fine as you normally have enough time to clear the junction before the pedestrians get a green light to cross. If you get a green filter arrow when you're returning right, that means you can go. The oncoming cars will now have a red light. The highway code recommends turning after you pass each other, but in reality, this rarely happens at traffic lights. In fact, there is not a single junction in Colchester where people do this. Everyone turns before they pass each other. Turning before each other has its own problems though, as it may block your view of oncoming cars, so be careful. Turning after each other is a bit more common on crossroads without traffic lights, but that's a different video. It's recommended that you use the handbrake when waiting at traffic lights, particularly when you're at the front of the queue to reduce how much you move into the junction if someone hits you from behind. However, this is not mandatory and you will not be marked down on your test if you don't use the handbrake. The car I teach in has a post collision system that applies the foot brake after a collision, which is far more effective than a handbrake. It's worth knowing if your car has this. As a new driver, I recommend keeping it in first gear with the clutch down when waiting at traffic lights. As it takes you longer to get ready to go, you want that first gear ready so you don't have much to do once it goes green. But when you're confident and you can get ready very quickly, it's quite nice to use neutral because that allows you to come off the clutch, which is a far more relaxing way to wait in traffic. If you're practicing without an instructor, make sure you have insurance. Get £20 off via the link in the description to Collingwood who provides specialist learner insurance that allows you to practice in a friend or family member's car without risking their no claims bonus. If you want to insure your own car, click on the link to confuse.com. I have found that they have the widest selection of cheap insurers for young drivers. So I hope that helps. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you want to see my future videos. I'll see you on the next one.